friends, today I'm super excited because I'm telling you all about the books that I'm most looking forward to in 2021. I'm going to be splitting this series, it's not a series, it's going to be like two videos, but I'm going to split it up the year into two parts. The first part is going to be books I'm very excited for between January and May, and then I'll make another video later on in the year talking about books I'm excited for from June to the end of the year. And I might be reading directly from Goodreads for some of these because some of them, they're on my list. I know I really want to read them, but I honestly might not know a lot about them. So I might leave you some of the summary to get you excited about them as well. First book I have to talk about comes out on January 12th, which is so soon already, which is wild. And that is Into the Heartless Wood by Joanna Ruth Meyer. And this is kind of like a fairy tale book, but it's about sirens in a forest. And I think it's kind of scary. I don't think I've ever read a book about sirens before. And I'm super intrigued by that idea, as well as the sirens being in a forest, as opposed to like on the ocean. I always love like a good forest setting, like a haunted kind of dealio. So that's what I'm hoping for. The next book I've been dying to read for what seems like forever is We Free the Stars by Hafsa Fazil. And this is the sequel to We Hunt. Oh God. This is the sequel to We Hunt the Flame, which came out in 2019. And I read this book when it first came out, loved it. It was an unexpected faith. It was such a great underrated fantasy book. If you have not picked this up, I love the characters. It's kind of like a journey quest story, a great atmosphere. Um, the, again, the characters are precious little angels and I love them. So I can't wait for the next one. I can't really tell you too much about it without spoiling this one, but this ended in a place where it was clear that the world was going to expand and become even more brilliant and maybe more focused on politics, which I always love in a fantasy. So really, really highly recommend you pick this up if you haven't and then read the next one when it comes out so soon, thank God. The next one is one I'm so fucking intrigued by. And I truly can't wait to read it. It's In the Garden of Spike by Camilla Bruce. And this book comes out on January 19th. If you know me, you know I love... I was going to say you know I love murder. I don't love murder. I love true crime. Um, and this is a book that is like a fictionalized retelling of one of the most prolific female serial killers in America. It just feels like a dark... I think she's a widow, yeah. She's called The Widow of Laporte. It's like a dark, scary, based on true crime, gothic book and I'm here for it. The next book has one of my favorite tropes that has been really popular lately and that's If I Disappear by Eliza Jane Brazier. And this book is centered around the true crime podcast. Again, love true crime. And I also love podcasting books. That's been really effective for me as far as thrillers go. Um, every book that I've read that has a podcast element inside of it has been super successful for me. Um, or even just like in multimedia, like a documentary or or another book instead of a book, like all of those seem to really do such a good job at building suspense in a thriller. And this is another one. This is about a girl who um, her favorite true crime podcast host goes missing. Um, she's really into it and kind of dives in obsessively to try to figure out what happened to this host. And stuff happens. <laughs> also though, like the cover of this book, I'm wild about, I'm wild. I love the fact that it's all torn apart and like the flowers and like the blueberries that go over her eyes. I love, it's great. Next one, another spooky vibe book. I guess I'm into spooky, I know I'm into spooky vibes, but this book comes out on May 18th. Um, skipped ahead a little bit, super sorry about that. Um, it's Madame by Phoebe Wynn. This is all I know about it. It's a gothic book, my favorite thing. It has a creepy cover, my favorite thing. It takes place at an all-girl boarding school, my favorite thing. <laughs> I don't need to know anything else. And quite frankly, I don't wanna know anything else going into this. It looks like truly based on the cover alone. Looks like it's like a secluded island boarding school deal and you know, people are probably gonna die. I don't, I'm hoping. <laughs> hoping crazy shit 
happens. The next book I actually already have from a publisher and I'm probably gonna read pretty soon just because I'm so excited about it. And that is The Babysitter, My Summers with the Serial Killer. Let me reiterate again how much I love true crime. This is a memoir. Well, it's like part memoir, part like true crime investigation that kind of melded together as two authors. It is about a girl who befriended, you know, her babysitter. They had a good relationship and she found out years later that her babysitter was a serial killer. I don't know anything about this case. Um, which makes me even more excited to read about it. Listen, I have a really shocking, shocking turn of events. We have another like gothic thriller. Um, that is Every Vow You Break by Peter Swanson. This cover is very reminiscent of the Madame cover I just showed you. It looks like a remote island where people get killed. <laughs> That's my vibe. Uh, which is not surprising at all. One of my favorite books of all time growing up was And Then There Were None. So are we really shocked that I love murders on islands? No. I've heard great things about Peter Swanson. I've never read any of his work. Um, I'm hoping to read A Perfect Murder soon because that book came out last year, I believe, and got a lot of praise. This one is... Oh, let me read this too. I guess I didn't realize what it was. I just saw the cover and was like, yeah, I'm in. A bride's dream honeymoon becomes a nightmare when a man with whom she's had a regrettable one-night stand shows up in this electrifying psychological thriller from the acclaimed author of Eight Perfect Murders. Love it. I can't wait to see what happens. We have another fantasy on this list. Change it up. This one comes out on March 9th and that is Sweet and Bitter Magic. I'm just going to read you a little blurb of it because I am not the best at explaining fantasy, but this cover let's let's just it's beautiful it says in this charming debut fantasy perfect for fans of sorcerer thorns and girls with paper and fire which both of those books i thought were okay um a witch cursed to never love meets a girl hiding her own dangerous magic and the two strike a dangerous bargain to save their queendom queendom instead of kingdom here for that hopefully it's a sapphic romance too probably is looks great the next book <laughs> God, I'm so predictable. Look at this cover. It's like the same cover as If I Disappear. There's a girl whose face is cut up with flowers, which apparently is a thing um, that I'm here for. And is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. It looks like it's about a girl whose sister goes missing because she's very close with her sister. Um, and she's trying to find out you know, what happened to her sister and dark truths come out. And now we have another shocking I didn't notice all these patterns until just now. We have another book with girls with flowers on the cover. This one is The Forest of Stolen Girls by Jane Hur. Again, love anything with a forest setting, especially creepy vibes. Um, this one is after her father vanishes while investigating the disappearance of a thirteen of thirteen young women. Oh, interesting. A teen returns to her secretive hometown. Love like a small town setting. I'm hoping it's small town to pick up the trail in this second YA historical mystery from the author of Sounds of Bones. I have not read Sounds of Bones, but I've heard fantastic things about it. Again, you got a mystery with a creepy forest. One of my favorite tropes in thriller is when someone goes back to their hometown to solve like a mystery that has never been solved. Could not be more excited. This book comes out April 20th. Another book comes out on April 20th is Witches Steeped in Gold by Sienna Smart. This is a book that I'm dying to read simply because this cover is magnificent. I believe it is a Jamaican inspired fantasy setting. There has to be an alliance between two witches who are sworn enemies to each other, but they need to help each other out. You know, maybe they fall in love. Here's open. The next book I have on my list is one, might be my most anticipated book of the, the year such a large thing to say, but um, it comes out on April 20th. I, I need it right now though. Um, it's World Travel, A Reverent Guide by Anthony Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain is probably, I'm gonna say like my biggest inspiration in life. I don't know why I'm being so shy and 
I love him so much. Um, I have loved him all throughout growing up, through high school, through college. He really, really just solidified my love of journalism, telling people stories, learning about different cultures, telling the truth about different cultures, um, being ingrained in conflict and learning all sides of the conflict and food and being honest. I, I just love him so much. I've been rewatching a lot of his shows this past year and I miss him terribly. So the fact that we get kind of one last thing um, from him is just so, so special. He obviously did not finish this book by himself before his death. Um, so it's not exactly what he had pictured in his mind when first starting out to write this book. It's basically traveling to different places that he's been, um, writing essays about these places, telling about these places, and then also getting essays and different pieces of information from people that live there to get their perspective. I'm just very excited to get my hands on this book and just like hug it and treasure it. Then on May 1st, we have Negative Space by Lily Danziger. Shh, I love her. I've been following her on Twitter for a while. She edited the book Burn It Down, which is a collection of essays about women writing about anger, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. Um, I love everything she puts out into the world. And this is her memoir. So very excited to read this one. And finally, one more book to talk about. This book comes out on May 4th, and that is The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He. This cover might be my favorite of the year. I just think it's so beautiful. Here's what Goodreads says in a little blurb. One of the most twisty, surprising, engaging page turner YAs you'll read this year. We were liars with sci-fi scope, lost with a satisfying resolution. Lost was always one of my favorite TV shows. And so just to see it, a sci-fi lost with a satisfying conclusion and like a twisty thriller with this cover. Y'all, 2021 is going to be a great reading year. I cannot wait to get my hands on all of these books. If you have any books that you're excited about coming out earlier this year, let me know so I can add them to my list. And yeah, we'll see you again soon.